On the heels of the United States' Office of the Control of the Currency publicly admitting in the first quarter of 2022 that the major U.S. precious metals markets are derivative dominated by only a few highly leveraged players. To be more precise, only four counterparty risk-laden commercial banks are really in charge in terms of domination in market share. The largest being J.P. Morgan Chase, then Citibank, Bank of America, and finally Goldman Sachs. At the end of March 2022, they are counterparty to 97.5% of all U.S. derivatives involving silver, platinum, palladium, and gold price bets. Complex derivatives like swaps, options, and futures contracts, the latter holding the huge sway over the prices quoted for precious metals around the world, day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. Within the precious metals community, it's long been known that the market making commercial banks operating in the COMEX often dominate precious metals price discovery. What is often not understood is that many of these same banks hold massive sway across the pond in what is arguably still the world's hub for precious metals price discovery, the seemingly lawless city of London. So it's ironic that this week, the same week that the pandemic delayed trial of four JP Morgan Rico traders begins, that a former longtime London gold trader admits to the world that Western precious metals markets have increasingly become leveraged derivative shams since his career started in London in the latter 1980s and 1990s. Don't forget the golden rule, whoever has the gold makes the rules, by longtime London gold trader Peter Hambro. Straws blowing in the wind are often said to presage great temptus, and I believe that this chart shows just such a straw. You do not need to take my word for it after all the straws being pointed out by the United States Comptroller of the Currency. Disinformation for many years has kept the lid on this tinderbox, and since 2018, the financial stability desks at the world's central banks have followed the Bank for International Settlements instructions to hide the perception of inflation by rigging the gold market. Of course, they cannot be seen to do this, and they need cover. The only way to achieve the cover is by smashing the price of physical gold by alchemist production of, quote, paper gold. With the help of the futures market and the connivance of the alchemists, the bullion traders, yes, that includes me, I was deputy managing director of Makata and Goldsmith, managed to create an unshakable perception that ounces of gold credited to an account with a bank or bullion dealer were the same as the real thing. Quote, and much easier, old chap, you don't have to store it or insure it. Once investors swallowed this stupefying pill, it was easy to sell them gold that simply didn't exist. Of course, there were wary investors who found it hard to believe that the likes of Makata, Montugo, Rothschild, and Sharp Speaksley were undoubted counterparties and wanted to be assured that the gold would be there when they called for it. Easy, we said. Don't bother to pay for it. Just give us an initial cash margin and agree to variation margin and our paper promise is as good as gold. This was the simple derivative. If you thought the price would go down, you could sell us gold you don't have and margin the trade in the same way. Then along came a raft of options and other products and the derivative market, for that is what the chimera was called, started to spiral like a tornado. To make the bogus gold look even safer, the Bank of England was quietly willing to lend the London gold market members physical gold in the event that things got a bit tricky and our vaults were empty. When one of the members went bust, the others clubbed together, and with the Bank of England holding the ropes, the customers were bailed out. But I didn't get a bonus that year. And this pseudo-confidence suited the brilliant theoretical economists. We, the government, we, the central bank, we, the BIS, can print the margin. That is what fiat currency is, not in luck Bitcoin, and easier to mine. Derivatives are unmargined and thus have no limit. They may not even be on the balance sheet. The great banks of Wall Street will accept our fiat dollars as margin and manufacture gold to swap the market. Gentle folks, look at this chart and then go see your bullion trading counterparty and buy some gold. Then ask for your gold or silver or platinum or palladium or any other physical store of value and medium exchange that you've acquired to protect you from the ravages of inflation. For inflation will surely engulf the world when the paper gold emperor's clothes are seen for what they really are. Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping are among those who know the golden rule. 
Whoever has the gold makes the rules. The author has worked in the gold business for more than 40 years, both as trader and investor. He co-founded and was chairman of Petrovalovic PLC until it was taken over by Russians and is now chairman of and a major shareholder of in XAU Resources, Inc., a precious metals exploration company with assets in Guyana and shares listed on the Toronto Ventures Exchange. In the show notes below, I will leave a link to that damning paper, Precious Metals Derivative Market, so you can go read it a few times over yourself. I find it ironic and perhaps not coincidental that the world gold market got this public admission this week, the same week, Four former J.P. Morgan precious metals traders, one the near decade-long co-head of the precious metals desk in the United States for J.P. Morgan, well, they go on trial in the USA under Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. What further insights will come from this four former J.P. Morgan precious metal trader trading trial? It's hard to guess, but surely there will be some worthwhile insights, and I'll keep you up to date on what I find. The jury trial, it started today, and yesterday I made a thread on Twitter about the saga of greed and control-driven precious metals price rigging. It's basically a choose-your-own-adventure saga into the depths and corruption that are these current-day precious metals price discovery markets. Many of the links in that Twitter thread will take you to time-stamped key sections from important past videos we've done here on the SD Bullion YouTube channel over the years. If you've not been following our channel for long or seen our videos for much in time, you might simply want to dig deeper into the subject by going over there. You can find basically an hour long deeper dive into the history of modern day precious metals price subversion. I mean, it's a documented fact all the way back to late 1974 when London gold traders and US Treasury agents conspired to bomb the spot gold price with outsized derivative leverage starting in 1975 when comics gold futures trading began. Now, uh, personally, I'm sick and tired of the scum that have ruled the precious metals markets for far too long, and I know you likely are too. I'll leave that Twitter thread link in the show notes below. Have at it at the second half of this week's update on precious metals trading action. As well, we're going to dig into crucial differences between this 21st century bullion bull market versus the less complex 1970s version. We're actually going to look at who's going to end up being the bag holders in this and who are going to be the ones that benefit the most. So stick around. Hello there, on behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson with a quick SDBullion market update. Before we go further, please smash the like button so other sound money stackers can also see this content. And be sure to subscribe to our SDBullion channel so you can get our latest market coverages and also a chance at winning incredible bullion giveaways like this one. Get ready for SD Bullion's Monster Box Sweepstakes that includes 500 Silver Eagles. You could be the next lucky recipient of a phone call like this. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. Well, I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a monster box of Silver Eagles. So click the link below for your click chance Click the link to below win. to enter our new 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin type two giveaway contest. And good luck to all of you who take part. The silver and gold markets predictably traded downward for the week respectively. The beatdown was most pronounced in the spot gold price market midweek with two waterfall price declines blasting gold down to below 17.50 an ounce to close the week. Silver held stronger after the initial sell-off of gold, as perhaps some derivative traders cut losing gold bets went into silver bets long, tightening the gold-silver ratio back to 90. Here's a 21st century look at where gold-silver ratio is today versus where it's been. Here's a 21st century fiat US dollar denominated silver price chart. And here's the 21st century fiat US dollar denominated gold price chart. Relative fiat Federal Reserve note or US dollar strength versus other fiat currencies, especially over the last three months, have produced large sell-offs in basically all commodity sectors across the board. How much more relative strength will our nation's, I would argue, illegal tender currency exude in the coming months? That will have a lot to do with whether or not we will have major disorder in financial markets come about soon enough. And if by when will the Federal Reserve pause and or pivot on its ridiculous front of being hawkish against stubbornly high secular price inflation, often acting obtuse to their long-term charge as if we're not mired in mass trillions of record debt and off balance sheet unfunded liability promise piles coming due this decade and into the next. I'm sure you know my opinion. I bet they'll choose orderly financial markets 
at some point, yield curve control, full debt monetization, perhaps buying ETFs, keeping our global financial market share large while trying to orderly sacrifice the nation's fiat currency store value power big time over the long haul in order to be able to pay and avoid legal defaults outright. Again, we have a digital printing press as fast as you can type them on a keyboard. It's not illegal to devalue the fiat currency by policy. Moving now to what I promised to discuss, some key takeaway points for modern day precious metals investors. A crucial difference between this 21st century secular bullion bull market versus the last tinier 1970s version, where all four major precious metals markets peaked in early 1980 within months of one another is derivatives, leverage. Kind of like the topic that the London Gold Trader talked about at the beginning of this video. In the last 1970s bullion bull market, only futures derivatives were capable of shoving around spot prices for medium term durations. Go look at 1975, 1976, and you'll see that in action. Eventually, control was lost. The longs won. As well, during that time frame, the IMF, Western governments, they had various gold sell-offs and forced other central banks. They all tried their best, but secular inflation brought about an overwhelming mix of greed and fear, and both are key emotions for precious metals, bull price manias, and manic price climbs. Back then, central banks were net sellers, not strong net buyers as they had been since the 2008 global financial crisis, exhibited that this fiat financialized system today is inherently unstable. After the London gold market got involved in gold lacing and opaque precious metals derivatives selling, the global financial markets of this 21st century started offering retail and institutional investors unsecured shares of stock in various precious metal ETFs or ETPs, Basically substitute price proxies, where you pay administrative fees and bear the risk for supposedly easy liquidation. Uh, the trusts and those who are in charge are basically the concentrated banks who are more or less running a Rico Suave throughout the entire market, uh, creating themselves bonuses while also keeping the precious metals prices in polite context. But I would suggest you go read the prospectus, virtually all of them, every single ETF or ETP, what have you, whatever fund it is. In virtually all of them, you'll find unsecured shareholders own nothing, but price and counterparty risk, of course, you own no bullion. Futures markets often double count ETF metals, pretending as if they're gonna somehow be used in delivery if and when big money crowds of longs demand so at some point. What'll happen is they'll get cash or ETF settled. Best of luck finding bullion anywhere. It's this tornado of derivatives, 1980s onwards, substitute proxies that mushroomed out, and bank concentrated leverage that has allowed price inflation to be hidden for so long. It's basically what's kept the monetary precious metals in check at polite price points, at least up until now. When recently asked, over 70 central banks responded about their collectively owning now over one fifth of physical gold ever mined by humankind. The vast majority who own gold bullion outright they do so to remain in power. It's for reasons of confidence, credibility, and store value, currency creation in the future. You're next to none of them, central banks. They don't use leveraged precious metals futures derivatives, unsecured ETFs or funds, or risk-laden mining shares to express their prudent long-term gold positions. We might want to follow what they're doing. They, after all, are still in charge. That's all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always, to you out there, take great care of yourselves, those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion-related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content.